We have enjoyed Reverend Darlene Strickland for four Sundays. Well, some of us have already had number four. You are just coming to number four. What a delight it has been to receive into our community the light, the wisdom, the joy, and the inspiration of this woman I have known to be an agent of change and transformation. Reverend Darling currently serves at Unity of South Sound, which used to be kind of my home territory, Federal Way, Washington, to be specific for her, as the minister in service there in that community, and I know they are fully blessed. She formerly was minister at Maui Unity and in Lawrence, Kansas before that. She is, you can tell, one of those movers and shakers of wisdom, of light, of opening of hearts. We have been blessed, and we now get to close the experience of Darlene's gifts of God in us with Sunday number four. Will you welcome Reverend Darlene Strickland? Don't make me cry, I gotta talk. <laughs> Mahalo, I would like to reflect back to Reverend Skye who is a dear friend and, a, and just a, a wonderful mentor to many ministers. But I'd like to reflect back to you, just the amazing spiritual ohana that you truly are. I don't just say that, I really mean that. From your music team, the volunteers, the staff, the board, every single person that shows up, you really do offer something very special and unique. You are a wonderful, warm community, and you've made it uh, hard to leave, to say the least. So would you give yourself a hand for being an incredible spiritual ohana? <laughs> Unity of Hawaii. You know, every Sunday, I love that you say, I am a beloved expression of God. Would you say that with me again? I am a beloved expression of God. And then you affirm that you're here for a purpose and you're at the right place at the right time right now. That's absolutely true for what we've been talking about in this four-week series based on the four elements of creation, the four elements of God revealed in our life. We began week one with the element of air that we breathe. And air represents the power of life. When we come into this world, we take our first breath to begin our individual life. The soul quality that air represents is the quality of inspiration. The second week, we talked about fire, and that fire represents the power of light, and that light is active in our life as transformation and illumination. Last week we talked about the power of water, that ever-flowing fountain of life, the energy of creation in motion, emoting. Water represents the power of love and the soul quality of influence in our life. So we've had the power of life, of light, of love, and today we look at earth, which represents the power of law and integration. You know, we say, every time we say the Lord's Prayer, as it is in heaven, so let it be on earth. And not just simply, we're not talking about the earth as we know it. We're talking about when the scriptures say, as it is in heaven, it means is the, in the unseen, the unmanifest realm. It's the celestial canoes that go up into the heaven and scoop up potential and bring it down to earth and make that which is just potential a living reality in and through each and every one of us that we are the earth where the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is revealed right here and right now through us. And that operates through a process called law, L-A-W. Now, does anyone else besides me not really find that to be a warm and fuzzy word? I liked love, but law, not so much. Anybody else? I was thinking about that this week, and I, I think I put together a pretty good talk, a good lesson on this. And as I began to reflect on it this morning, this is what I thought about it all. <laughs> I said, you know, what if I take this well-crafted lesson, and I give you a little piece of it, and I give Edward a piece, and I give our beloved auntie who's celebrating her 90th birthday a piece of it. Yeah. And I just 
pass all these pieces out and then have you line up and read whatever little words are on your piece of paper, we may actually get through the talk faster than I would do it. But is it going to make any sense like that? No, not whatsoever. Because there's no structure, there's no frame of reference for it to, to be presented and to make sense. You see, when we talk about law, what we're talking about in the earth is everything evolves through evolving the system. All systems evolve as they evolve their self. That you need a frame of reference, a structure in order to contain that information and have it make sense. You can take a child who's six years old and in the first grade, a very bright child, and let's take them up to Harvard University and sit them in an advanced physics class for about a month. Now that six-year-old child in that Harvard advanced physics class, do you think they're going to learn very much? Other than they probably think they hate Harvard University <laughs> at six years old having to go sit there. Well, there's nothing wrong with that child and there's nothing wrong with the university or the information that's being conveyed, but that little child does not yet have the mental structure, does not yet have the educational foundation to be able to absorb and take in what's being offered and so it means nothing to them. It's like that movie, remember the movie, you want the truth but you can't handle the truth. That we have to be ready for these things. When I lived on Maui, I heard that you're going to have a class this week that's offered on nutrition. When I lived on the island of Maui, I took a class from Malik, one of the teachers there, about healthy eating in Hawaii. First night of the class, he said, you've probably all heard this before, you are what you eat. We all said that, and he said, wrong. We all like, what? He said, you are what you absorb and integrate. He said, if you eat a penny, do you turn into a penny? <laughs> I thought, well, you got a point, no. We are what we absorb and integrate. That's true in life, that all systems, everything evolves through the development of the system. And so this last element, earth, is where we put it into practice, we make it practical, as in heaven, so in earth, that these skills and talents and qualities such as love and peace and beauty and abundance. We want them to be not just an idea, a divine idea. We want them to be a reality in our life. But we must build the foundation. It's just like Alethea who plays the piano. I think she's a beautiful musician. You have a lot of incredible musicians. But I guarantee you that when she was a child growing up, if every day she had spent an hour a day praying to play the piano, and never touched a piano, do you think she could play the piano today? I doubt it. That it requires our participation. She had to develop the skills, the mastery to learn the language of music, and then she could get out of her own way and allow music to play her. So it is in our life. Each of us are this earth. And all the qualities of the divine, love, peace, abundance, beauty, whatever it is we seek, it lands in your heart and in your life like your individual dreams, your talents, your desires. These things are not just simply a dream or a talent or a desire. These are divine ideas that are wanting to be brought down to the realm of earth through you. They want you to put that idea into a living reality so you can bring all that God is into expression. And so we begin to talk about how do we do that? Well, life builds upon life. Life can only work with itself, so life builds upon life. Another way to say that is life builds upon itself. Another way to say that is you are the self upon which life builds. That when we say that the, when the Spirit of God shows up in and through and as you, that's what we're talking about. That life builds upon itself, it builds upon us. And so our questions for earth become, what are you building your life upon? What are you using to build the life that you desire? And how can you integrate more of your spiritual potential into a living reality? Earth always asks us to look at three things. The past, the present, and what I'll call the future for now. The past all that has come before us. Does anyone have any unresolved, unfinished, undone business from the past? 
I heard somebody whistle on that one. <laughs> Anything lingering out there and you know it needs to be finished up, but it's still out there. What if we get really honest? Is there anyone that's withholding any forgiveness work because we're still ticked off about it? There went a hand, amen. <laughs> All of us have things that have come before us and we may not yet be fully at peace with these things. But you see, in order for us to really make the most out of life, it is absolutely essential that we integrate the past as best we can. And your intention of being willing to integrate the past is the most important thing. There's a wonderful story about two monks who had taken a year vow of silence and solitude. They traveled away and stayed in isolation for a solid year. At the end of the year, the last few days, they were walking back to their village and they had maintained silence and solitude for almost a year. As they were approaching the village, they had to pass this large stream and in the stream was a woman who was trying to get across and she was caught and she was stuck. Well, the one just stayed focused and did not even notice her. The other one could not help but notice her. And so he walked over and without saying anything, he simply picked her up and he helped her across the stream. He put her down. Well, as they continued their walk, it was quite obvious that the other gentleman, the other monk, was quite upset at what had happened. But he didn't say anything until they got to the village and the ceremony was finished and they could finally talk. And then he went over and he said, I cannot believe it an entire year and the last few minutes you break your vow and he said what do you mean he said I was only present to a need at hand I carried a woman across the stream he said but it is you my friend who are still carrying this woman you see he still carried it with him holding on to that well, each of us have things in our life that are hard to let go it's hard to get over you know, I think about it, it's sort of like if, if stones and things are coming our way every single day, it's easy to get tripped up over things that come our way. And sometimes things come in the direction of our life that is hurtful, that may have been intended for purposes of hurting us. Sometimes very young people experience things that they should never have to experience. Sometimes we do things that we don't think we can ever forgive ourselves of these things, and that we all are either facing big rocks or a bunch of little rocks of things that have come our way and we ask how in the world do I integrate this? How do I make peace with this? But you see the key is these things can all be stumbling blocks or stepping stones. And if we understand that the purpose of life that we are here, we are a beloved expression of God already, then everything that comes into my life, even those things that I wish were not there, that I may never agree that they are good or, I, or should have happened, I can still accept. I don't have to agree that they were good. I can accept them for what they were and choose to rise up and rather than be held down and oppressed by them, I stand on top of them and I continue to integrate and to evolve and allow everything that has come in the path of my life, all of these things to come for purposes of good. And so the first affirmation is, all that has come before me, I intend for purposes of good together. All that has come before me, I intend for purposes of good. And that's where we start, to be willing to be willing I intend for purposes of good. And you'll be amazed at the energy that that will free up and you'll be more grounded, more in your body, more present and available. As the past is clear, we are now more present and available for the present moment. You know, they say the present moment is called a present because it is the gift of life. That the present moment is really the only moment that we truly have. The, the point of power is found in the present moment. I love in the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus said, Recognize what is before you, and what is hidden from you will be revealed to you. For there is nothing hidden that will not be made manifest. There is nothing out there that's simply still potential that cannot be made manifest and realized in your life. Rumi said, look, even now the king is scattering treasure from the palace. 
but this gold is only caught by those who make themselves an empty space before it. And then Mary Oliver says, keep some room in your heart for the unimaginable. You see, so often in our lives, we, we miss the present moment. Did you know that 93 to 97% of the thoughts we think today, we thought yesterday? That's a lot of rerun, recycled thinking. <laughs> and the question becomes, are they even our original thoughts in the first place? There's a great story about a Sunday school teacher who asked her class, do you believe in God? Every hand went up, I believe in God. And then she said, why do you believe in God? Every hand went down. Finally, one little boy raised his hand and she said, so why do you believe in God? And he said, well, it just runs in my family. <laughs> Oh, there's a lot of things that just run in our family or run through our culture or our society or through the media that we pick up and we pick up all of these things and are recycling a lot of that. Well, the present moment asks us to realize that it is in this moment that the connections will be made. The present moment is your relationship with life. Dr. John Izzo was working at home one day on a project that he really needed to get completed. He said he was focused on his computer working and his little daughter Sydney came in and said, Daddy, Daddy, there's a bug in the driveway. It's got dots and it's striped. It's beautiful. You have to come see it. He just ignored her and he kept working. And so what do children do when you ignore them? They get louder. And so he said, Daddy, Daddy, there's a bug in the driveway. It's got spots and it's got stripes and it's beautiful. You have to come see it. And he said, Sydney, I'm busy right now, baby. Maybe the bug will be there in just a little while and we'll go after a while. She said, Daddy, bugs do not wait for us. <laughs> he said in that moment, he got it. He got up. He let her take him by the finger lead him down the sidewalk where they knelt together. And he said, sure enough, it was one of the most interesting looking caterpillars he'd ever seen because it did indeed have polka dots and stripes. And there it was in their driveway and little Sydney was fascinated as she shared this moment with her dad. They had a real heart connection in that moment when he took time to do that. You see, he gave her a gift and they created a memory. And John said, 20 years later, I have no idea what I was working on, why it even seemed important. I can't even tell you what it was. But I can clearly still visualize that fuzzy polka dot striped caterpillar. And most of all, the look in Sydney's eyes. Because we created a memory and there was a connection that went into the fabric of that child's being and the fabric of his being that was part of them. It became part of them and they carried it forward. You see, every day, the present moment is offering us incredible gifts. If we take the time to connect, to take that breath, to slow down, to be present. So the affirmation of the present moment reminds us that with an open heart and an open mind, I am present and available to take in more life together. With an open heart and an open mind, I am present and available to take in more life. Now this word more is kind of a tricky word because the world and television commercials would always like to sell you more, yes? Something better, more, more, more is better and that's not necessarily true. As a matter of fact, most of the time that's untrue. But one time during my meditation, I saw that word more as an acronym, M-O-R-E and what I saw that more really is is the magnificent one revealing and expressing. The mysterious one revealing and expressing. How and where? Through you, through me. You see, we are all like a puzzle. We're very much like that perfect picture on the outside that's whole and complete. We are created the likeness and image of God. We are whole, we are perfect, we are complete. And yet the reason that we're in a physical body with skin on is to make that which is true in spirit to make it a living reality. So therefore we are also like all those pieces on the inside of the box. Now are there days when you feel like you do not even have two pieces of your puzzle together? 
Are there times when you feel like you've kind of got the picture together and then you step back and you're like, oh Lord, they've already changed it. That picture is not working anymore. I need a bigger picture here. We're all both of those. We are the pieces in the box that are coming together and it is the power of earth, the power of law that is saying as you build on this and on this and on this and on this and as you digest everything that life gives you and make meaning of it, make it useful, put it into practical use because you have the power to do that, that is how we grow and evolve and the dream that we are in spirit, we begin to manifest it and become a living representation of who and what we already are. The Japanese have a beautiful process called kintsukori. Kintsukori. In this culture, when the bowls are made, the pottery bowls begin to break. They put them back together with gold. Kintsukori means to repair with gold. And in this culture, the pieces that have been broken and, and mended by gold become the most beautiful, the most appreciated pieces because the true beauty begins to show up as it begins to come apart and be put back together with gold. You see, the power of earth is always helping us put pieces together in our life to take the steps that we need to make meaning and puts it together with the gold, the God of our being, so that as we show up, we are revealing the God of our being. This fourth point, we talk about the past, we talk about the present moment, and we talk about the future. The future is really your relationship with the direction of your life, your relationship with your purpose and your potential to realize are we holding this big picture and at all times seeking to have our life go in the direction where it reveals that picture. Sometime, one time someone asked Socrates, how do you get to Mount Olympus? And he said, you make every step you take go in that direction. You see, even the missteps, even those things that when you did at the time it seemed like a good idea, yes, <laughs> now you wish you never did it. Even those things, those missteps, those mistakes that we may call them, you can make all of those things go in the direction to reveal the picture of your life. There's a plaque that hangs in your foyer that I think sums this up beautifully. It says, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. You see, the direction of our life is about the dream that we hold, the truth of who we are, and what we believe is possible and always seeking to bring that into a reality. I'd like to share a final video with you. Many of you have probably seen this and it's a remarkable story of a woman, her name is Susan. When Susan was born, it was a challenging childbirth and she was without oxygen for a period of time which created some brain damage. She grew up and she was challenged in school. She was behind the other children. She just didn't quite have it together. She was nicknamed and labeled Susie Simple. The other kids disrespected her, but Susie had a dream of singing. She had a dream and knew that even with the flaws that the world may say she had, that those were really cracks, opportunities for the divine to shine forth through her. And she took everything that life handed her and turned it into a stepping stone. And this is what God made of Susan. All right, what's your name, darling? My name is Susan Boyle. Okay, uh, Susan, uh, where are you from? I am from Blackburn near Bathgate, West Lothian. It's a big town. It's a sort of collection of, it's a collection of uh, villages. I to think there. And how old are you, Susan? I am 47. And that's just one side of me. <laughs> okay, what's the dream? I, I'm trying to be a professional singer. And why hasn't it worked out so far, Susan? I've never been given the chance before, but he's hoping it'll change. Okay, and who would you like to be as successful as? Elaine Page. Elaine Page. Like what are you going to sing tonight? I'm going to sing I Dreamed a Dream from the Miserables. Okay. Big song. <laughs> yeah? Yes. Yeah. 
I dreamed a dream in time gone by. by day and rise by night and the seed should sprout and grow and the one who planted the seed does not know how for the earth yields crops by itself first the blade then the head and then the full grain and when it ripens we reap the harvest you must sow your seed you must water and you must Pull the weeds that come up in your life and remember that God shall always give the increase. You see, the reason we love Susan's story is because we just watched God give the increase. You are at the right place at the right time right now. In closing, Charles Fillmore said, we should form the habit of blessing everything that we have. And we know that we are setting the law of increase in operation. All that has come before, the present moment, and the direction of our life, we are here to make evident the glory, the fullness of God, right here and right now. I invite you to close your eyes and Perhaps just readjust yourself and take in that fresh breath of air. And turning your awareness within. That you too have dreams inside of you and that dream is for more. And yet not to be confused with simply acquiring more things or clutter or confusion in our life but to rise above that and to realize that this more is the magnificent one, the mysterious one from which you came, is seeking to reveal and express through your life. That is the seed of every dream. 
There is some divine idea that is wanting to bloom through the landscape of your life. And that wherever you are in your life right here and right now, whatever is upon the landscape of your life, you are there for a holy purpose. And that purpose is to bring forth more, the magnificent one revealing and expressing, making that which is in heaven made known on earth through you. So we say yes. And we make ourselves present and available. As we accept all that we are, we become more of all that is. As I bring forth all that I am, I bring forth more of all that is. Would you claim that with me together? As I bring forth all that I am, I bring forth more of all that is in the silence.